Hi, I'm Mark Weiner, and this is the Mentorship Challenge. With me, I'm privileged and honoured to have Amy Kleinhans Kurd. Many of you will remember her as the winner of Miss South Africa 1992, but today she's a director of the PLP group, People Linking People. Quite an amazing business. Amy, welcome. It's an absolute pleasure to have you with me. No, it's lovely to be here. Thank you for the invite. So before we get into what you're doing today, maybe let's just go back a little bit to the Miss mm. South Africa days. You were the first person of colour to win Miss South Africa. Mm. Big excitement and some concern from the, I mean, it was 1992. It was just before, two years before democratic elections. Nelson mm. Mandela had just been released. And then we host the Miss World and every one of these ladies is to come on stage holding the country's flag. Mm. You have a look and you say, I'm not doing this. <laughs> yep. Okay, very brave. <laughs> what do you mean you're not doing it? You're not going to carry the old South African flag. We didn't have a new flag yet. And as a compromise, you then carried the Miss World, a, a, plain, a plain flag with the Miss World logo. Okay, yes. After that, you were inundated with calls congratulating you yeah. and some abusive calls. Yep. Okay. You answer the phone and you hear, hello, <laughs> do you know who is speaking? And you think somebody's pulling your leg, yep. but it's actually Nelson Mandela. That's what was that like? He was my absolute hero as a student at uni. I just like, I thought, oh my word, if I could meet this man. And when he actually called, it was, it was a really an incredibly significant dream come true for me on many, many levels. But most importantly, I think for me is that it rings true to be able to stand for something and the, and the fruits of that, that you bear afterwards is, is uh, inconceivable. So I, I, I innocently stood for basic principle in my life. As in South Africa at the time, I couldn't even vote. But um, I was hoping, obviously, for a good, peaceful transition. And then I get my hero phoning me and congratulating me on making a really amazing, brave stance as a young lady on an international stage and showcasing to the world that our lost generation that they were calling us as the youth was not lost. And when you launched Dial a Teacher, he launched it with you. Yes, I actually, I went to him and I said, you know, Tata, I'm... I walk into the call centre, which is my husband's business. He developed a call centre just two or three years before that. And I mentioned, I said, you know, this infrastructure is standing here with skeleton staff in the evening. Surely we can use it. And I said, how about we do something small for all children in South Africa, for all learners. We afford them somebody to call if they're struggling with research, homework, needing to speak to a teacher, needing advice. How about doing that? He says, I think it's a brilliant idea. So great. maybe just explain to us what else you're doing. Uh, so the PLB group of companies actually looks after the, the lives outside of your business that you and your work environment. So if you're an in individual that works for a corporate and the corporate has taken on our services as a work-life balance program, as a vast program for your company, we actually then service you as an individual and, and look after all your needs. And we've now turned that entire knowledge base into a wonderful uh, app called Hey Jude. Won't let you down. Hey Jude, won't let you down. The Beatles, one of my favorite songs. That's amazing. I mean, you've built really an amazing business across a wide spectrum. Mm. Let me ask you this question. If you hadn't won Miss South Africa, mm -hmm. do you think your path would have been the same? Or did that really give you the ability to open doors that would have perhaps been closed? It's a rhetorical question, Mark. <laughs> 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 no, of course my life would have been completely different. I'm very entrepreneurial would, in would my own life. Would have helped those poor kids who didn't get you to teach uh, them. To, <laughs> I, probably would, I, would be, I probably would not be teaching. I probably would have spread my wings a little bit within the in educational world. I know that about myself and my personality. But of course, the, the opportunities that you get as a Miss South Africa um, is, is, it is 
it opens up the doors to broaden the platform of your audience. So I decided after the Miss South Africa, why would I only look and teach and give myself to eight or 10 or 30 children in a classroom where the entire platform of the world is now open. So as an individual, I know always that I would have been a global player, regardless of which industry I, I went into. But um, the Miss South Africa just accelerated um, that process for me. Did you have mentors? Oh, 100%. And I also, I think what is so interesting about the modern world of technology is that you now don't actually need to have a face-to-face -face with your mentor. I mean, the she she uh, Sheryl Sandberg has been the most incredible mentor to me through reading her books and being part of her circle, leaning circle, to actually listen to what Brian Joffe has to say or uh, whoever it is that is, is, is um, giving advice at the time, this channel, um, so mentorship has changed its face greatly in... It doesn't have to be across a desk or face to, to face. It doesn't have to be You learn from people that you work with. You said exactly. earlier that your husband yes. was a, huge, a good mentor, huge. notwithstanding the fact that he's a Kiwi. I'm not going to look at it. But what we want you to do, and the real reason we brought you here, besides just for my ego, <laughs> is to ask you mm. how many hours of your time are you prepared to give to mentor people out there who are watching this program, mm -mm. who will find inspiration, who will find getting advice from you uh, a life-changing experience? Well, I'm prepared to give a good hour a month, either Skype or telephone call or email chat. You'll okay. probably have a one-on-one -on -one Skype or one-on-one. Okay. -on -one. You'll get to understand them. They're going to tell you what they're doing. You'll give them some advice. You'll tell them, come back in a couple of weeks. And there that's going to get shorter and shorter because yes. they're going to use you as a sounding board. Yes. So 24 hours I've got from you. Okay. That's casting stone. We're okay. not letting you go give any less than that. Okay. Now, do you have anybody else? Yes, that I've got a wonderful um, colleague of mine who uh, runs the, the, the LEAP division, Petra Rees, and she really has our heart in the right place for young entrepreneurs. Amy, it's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you for Pleasure. joining us. Thank you for your generous contribution. I am so blown away by what you're doing in the educational space. Dial a teacher, leap. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that your business is going to grow from strength to strength to strength. Thanks, Thank you for coming. That. Thanks, lovely chatting. And you. If you would like to be mentored by Amy, please register on the website. And remember, you can go to our YouTube channel to catch up on all of our previous interviews, then register on our website. It could and will change your life. We will see you after the break. With me in the studio is Gil Ovid. You might not know the name unless you've seen him on Shark Tank or on Dragon's Den. Welcome, Gil. Thank you for joining Great us. Great to be here, Mark. Thank you. So, quite an interesting career. Uh, one of these inverted commas overnight successes, uh, but overnight probably being about 20 years or more. Exactly. So, so what I found interesting, when you were a teenager, 15 or something, you were co-hosting a TV show. Huh. Uh, that was quite fun, I'm sure. And then uh, when you left school, you did a, a degree at UNISA and decided to go into TV production. Mm. Did okay, but didn't really gain much traction. So three years later, uh, you decide that's no good. And together with uh, your school friend, uh, Rav, you start an internet business, mm. okay? So what was that going to do, that internet business? It was, uh, we were reading articles in, in those days that said that day trading is going to be the new big thing and, and engineers and dentists were leaving their full-time professions and going into this and it was going to be the next big career. And so we decided we're going to, and you know, in retrospect it sounds kind of amateurish, but if you think about 1998, it was all the rage and we decided we're going to start a financial portal to allow day traders to go online and trade shares 
in real time and get uh, real time information and analysis and everything. We raised a few million rands and had a lot of hope for it. So yeah, that was the dot com boom. Yeah. Uh, people were doing anything in, in the internet space. And then comes the crash, the dot com mm. crash, and your investors go bust and so do you. Yes. Okay. Mm. So how do you pick yourself up? Oh, it, is a, it is a very tough time. Um, I, I would probably say one of the toughest times in my life and it was, um, you know, you, 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 you're actually depressed. Hard to get out of bed and motivate yourself. And you have to find something deep inside of you that kind of allows you to accept that um, failure is a part of life. And you have to find things that re-motivate you. And, uh, and uh, for me, what I knew t walking away from, from the losses and, and the disappointment and the embarrassment and all the stuff that comes with failure was that I wanted to be a master of my destiny. I, the thought of getting a job at a corporate was more abhorrent than actually the, the thought of failing again. So um, we picked ourselves up and dusted ourselves off and started from scratch. Um, what I didn't realize at the time though, uh, and one only realizes this much later, because this is what I would tell a mentee, is that very often breakdowns actually equal breakthroughs. And yeah. You don't know it at the time. Very, very much so. You don't know it at the time, but when, when you look back how often We've all, I guess, gone through breakdowns, and in retrospect, you realize that that's a breakthrough, a necessary breakthrough. So then what happens is uh, Run has a girlfriend yeah. who's part, a part-time student, mm. and she's making extra money by doing promotions, mm. and she's making a reasonable amount of money doing this. So you see this as a stopgap. Yeah. Uh, maybe this is something we can just do, mm. get involved in this until we find the next best, th exactly. th best thing. So you start that and it goes better than you thought and that evolves into the Creative Council. Yeah. Okay. And uh, for that, I think you got some backing, financial backing from Buffett, from yeah, Jonathan. Yeah, at some point, yeah. Uh, at a point in time. And you built that over how many years before you sold it? Uh, we sold it after uh, 15 years. 15 years. Mm. So in 15 years- That's the overnight you, success yeah, you were it's talking overnight about. overnight success. <laughs> so you, you built it into one of Africa's largest advertising agents, starting off just doing sort of in-store promotions yeah. and stuff, and then evolving into a full range yes. uh, of services. And then in 2015, you sell that business mm for a record price for hmm. an advertising agency in, in Africa. So now you've made some money and you are looking for the next big thing. So you go into venture capital, yes. but in, in two different businesses, the one you're, you're on the board of, of one? Yes. Which one is that? It's called Calon. It's a 12J venture capital oh, company, you're using yeah. the part of the 12Js. Okay, so for the benefit of viewers, 12Js are a structure where you can invest providing the business, I think, is not more than 50 million rand or a yeah. number, and you get very nice tax write-offs. Yeah, it's, it's part of the, the, the attempts of government to promote venture capital investment, high-risk investment. Okay, so, so that one's in the 12J, and yeah. then you have your own business? Yes, I've got my own business called LLH Capital, which is a private equity investment business. And, and what does that focus on? The idea, the idea is, is focusing on the African continent and focusing on, on tech, specifically financial inclusion, uh, democratization of, of data. So anything that is tech focused and, and focused on digitizing uh, the, the, the African economy. So it's looking at old uh, industries uh, like uh, agriculture and bringing in uh, tech to modernize the continent. And I feel very strongly that there's huge potential on the continent for growth and lots of great entrepreneurs who have wonderful ideas and all the world and the hunger in the world, but they're lacking mentorship and unfortunately also capital. capital. You need to have a good plan because putting down a business plan and thoughts on paper is important because it forces you to process information and do research and get to know your competitor environment and your market. But at the same time, you need to accept that the day you finish your business plan and start your business, that business plan is old already. <laughs> Absolutely. Strategy is important. 
but a willingness to review the strategy and change it is equally important. Structure is important. You know, I see people spending uh, you know days on end uh, around the boardroom table planning their structure. I believe that you need to restructure your organisation all the time. And what kind of manager were you, are you? I mean, when you were in Creative Council, were you yeah. very hands-on? Were you happy to delegate? You've got to get your hands dirty and you've got to get involved. But similarly, a point comes where you realise that your business isn't going to be a lifestyle business, but rather a big, scalable organisation that one day may be even you know, listed or sold. And So uh, a kink needs to happen in your career trajectory to say, OK, well... Now I'm going to learn not how to do things, but how to ask the right questions, how to inspire, how to focus more on culture, uh, on a way of thinking as opposed to actually executing. I think that takes a lot of discipline mm. to be able to be that hands off. Yeah, so I've got this uh, theory that I, I call it uh, the 1% uh, CEO. And <coughs> what I mean by that is um, if you look at CEOs generally, 99% of the work that they do, they are well overpaid for. 99% of it um, is, is work that is probably your deputy or other managers could do equally well and probably at a tenth of the mm. price. The other 1% is that special time when only a great CEO can step up to the challenge. It's when all hell's breaking loose when no one has the courage to make those bold decisions. Um, and that 1% is what you get paid the 99% yeah. of your salary for. That's an interesting way. Yeah. Maybe it's 5%, not yeah. 1%, but the yeah. thing is the same. We will continue this discussion with Gil after the break. Going back and looking at your failures and your successes and the lessons that you've learned from your failures, what advice would you give to some young people out there who are looking to start going to business? Uh, what shouldn't they do rather than what should they do? One of the mistakes that we made is we didn't appreciate the importance of people in the early days. Uh, when you're a startup entrepreneur, the only thing that matters is survival and paying, paying the bills and you look for the cheapest resource possible. But my view is that within a certain role, your variance between, from a salary perspective, in a certain band between the cheapest resource for that role and the most expensive is maybe 20, 25 percent. But you get 100 percent more from the best. Good so always hire the themselves. best. And then I would, I would add to that. So people, very important. And then systems, basic systems, hygiene factors, things that aren't exciting to entrepreneurs. Get your finances right. Yeah. How, how often has a great business been destroyed because of cash flow? So along this journey, have you had mentors? Well, I joined an organization called YPO, Young Presidents Organization, a global organization. It's a big part of my yeah. life and it was a game changer for me. There are many other organizations out there, Endeavor, EO, many mentorship organizations that give support to entrepreneurs at various levels yeah. of their career. I've never had a one of those mentors that have started and ended with me no, no, it's not. and I actually don't believe in that I think you need short bursts extract as much information out of that mentor and then move on to sometimes to other people. it's not even formal it's just mm. talking to somebody bouncing bouncing an idea off uh, talking maybe that's not the way you should do it or mm. it sparks an idea yeah we talk about mentors. this concept of uh friday night dinner yeah. table talks yeah. uh, and i really believe in that i think uh, as parents we should be encouraging kids to sit around the table and as much as one talks about you know what's on tv and stuff but to talk business which is something that uh you know i saw all around me family and, and close friends and stuff there was always business talk and, and the kids were inquisitive and were encouraged to challenge and question. And that kind of built my confidence to, to, yeah. do, to do things. So, so that's one of the, the issues that I have uh, with South Africa, particularly with the previous disadvantage. Mm. To many, many people from the townships, that could be in a scenario where the father's a security guard, the mother's a domestic. Uh, mm. I mean, there's no business talk. Mm. And there's no one, there's no network for them. Mm. And this is what we are trying 
to mm. provide. Just tell me a little bit, what about hobbies? What do you do when, you, when you're not working? Well, actually, I've dedicated my non-working life to, to giving back through mentorship, strangely. So, uh, whereas the kind of mentorship that we're talking about is, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. uh, the kind of stuff that I do mainly is I do a lot of talks and presentations and mainly to uh, young entrepreneurs, um, if they come from previously disadvantaged and all the better, I think that entrepreneurship can solve all of the country's problems. Definitely. And my view is if we could get a million entrepreneurs hiring five people each, we've got five million people employed, that's game over. That's the end of the employment, unemployment yeah. problem kind of thing, just to put it in yeah. crass terms. So, um, and, and to your point, uh, I see so much, so much potential you know, there's so much entrepreneurship all around us. And uh, just as a quick analogy, if you want to see how entrepreneurial this country is, just go to any street side intersection. And if there's a if there's a big soccer game on, the guys are selling flags. As soon as the uh, spring rains are uh, happening, the guys are selling yeah, umbrellas. Yeah, Somehow there is a distribution dancing network. Dancing at the things, juggling. Yeah, they're doing whatever. things. There's, and there's so that's much just happening. a small example. So there's so much potential, but that potential needs to be channeled. And the only way that can be done is through inspiration and, and mentorship. So if you had to say to our viewers out there, there's a book that mm. impacted you or, or really grabbed you that you would recommend that they read, what would it be? Uh, there have been quite a lot of books and it changes uh, over time. Uh, so what I would recommend is uh, the series of Malcolm Gladwell books, all yes, of them yeah. really important. I think successful biographies, like Losing My Virginity was one of my seminal, seminal biographies. I, I read a lot of biographies when I was younger. Uh, and I think the beauty of biographies is very often, you see people, by the time you find out about someone, they've reached this level, realizing that they started below where you are now and they got there, gives you the hope and inspiration and optimism that you can do it yourself. So biographies are very important. And um, this book, Sapiens, I think it should be prescribed curriculum work at an fantastic, early age. Fantastic book. And for the benefit of viewers, I didn't mention it, Gil is the co-author of a book mm. with some of his other dragons. Yes. I'm in. Yes. I haven't read it, huh. but I'm sure if you do read it, uh, that there will be some valuable uh, words of inspiration there. What we want to know is how many of your hours yeah. will you give to people out there who want to get into business and who would love to be mentored by you? So, um, uh, I, I, I do a lot of uh, mentorship already and I love, I love it. It's an honor to be able to give, to give back time. Uh, what I want to offer is 12 hours, uh, one hour over 12 months or, uh, or one hour over six months for two people where we meet once a month and we have an agenda. So you're saying two hours a month? One hour each over 12 months? Well, I, I didn't two say hours, each. Two, uh, two uh, hours uh, a month. No, 12 is hours is... Listen, for somebody as successful as you, you can't give me 12 hours. I'm not accepting 12. This is, uh, this is a lot of time. I mean, this is... One hour yeah. a month. So, okay, well Listen, then, you're newly married. Uh, yeah. Just now you'll I've find... I've got a child on the way. Yeah. Just now you'll find, especially yeah. when the child is crying at night, that you actually want to give about 10 hours <laughs> so you can get away. Okay. So 12 hours, not acceptable. Let's go up. Okay, so we do two hours a month. 24 hours. Wow, that is, okay. that is a lot. a month, 12 months, 24. Thank you very much for that. So who are you going to also challenge somebody mm. in that mm. you know, yes. who you think would make a great mentor? So there is a, a, a guy that I have known for over 20 years. He's a fantastic individual. He's smart, he's ambitious, he's passionate, he's worldly. Uh, he's had experience in entrepreneurship, but also in large corporate. His name is Romeo Kumalo. I'm very proud to call him a, a business partner of mine as well. He was a shark on Shark Tank, and he's had an incredible uh, varied career starting his career uh, in media and moving through to telco and uh, now as an entrepreneur investor uh, he's got a wide range of knowledge we're going to tell him that we only got 24 hours out of you and i'm yeah. sure he can do better <laughs> and, we'll, and we'll let you know great. but thank you for that it, it's yeah. been great 
and we look forward to hearing great things from you Thank in you. the venture capital Thank space. You. And, and, and Mark, well done to you for what you've, what you've done and what you're doing. I think it's incredible. Thank you. If you would like to be mentored by Gil, please register on the website. And remember, you can go to our YouTube channel to catch up on all our previous interviews and then register on our website. It could change your life. We'll see you next week.